Hi everybody, this is Mr. Williams, here to talk to you about dialogue format and commas with direct quotations. When talking about dialogue format and commas with direct quotations, we have a few things to look at. First, we're going to talk about dialogue format and why it's important. Second, we'll give you an example of dialogue format to look at. Third, we'll talk about the punctuation rules for dialogue, specifically with commas. And then fourth, if you want them, we have some example problems, although you will have plenty of example problems provided to you in class, outside of class, and so forth. So in the case of narrative writing, meaning writing with a narrator, so when you're telling a story, you need to format your dialogue for a few reasons. First, we want to clearly mark when a person is speaking versus when the narrator is speaking. That way your audience doesn't get confused as to what you're saying versus your characters or a person is saying. Second, we want to help your reader understand who's talking at what points. If I'm having a giant narration with description or other details along with the dialogue, I need to make sure people can tell which is which. And finally, it's to keep your story neat and well organized. When I'm writing my dialogue, I want to make sure that it's clear what's going on, and dialogue format is just part of that process. So when we write dialogue, there are five formatting rules to follow. First, we put quotation marks around any word said by a character or person. That way it's very clear when the characters or people are speaking as opposed to the narrator. However, thoughts are usually italicized. Second, we make sure we end each quote with a punctuation, a comma, a period, or something else, before the quotation mark. That's just general grammar rules, which we'll talk about later, but it's also important just for the sake of following a good procedure when writing our dialogue. Third, we indent any line that starts with dialogue. And fourth, when a new character starts speaking, you should almost always make a new indent. These indents allow our reader to see quickly that someone's talking as opposed to maybe a previous situation where there was description. When a new character starts, having that indent will allow the reader to see quickly that a new person is speaking in the conversation. And finally, make sure to identify who is speaking whenever the reader might be confused. It's pretty easy to just go back and forth with quotation marks and dialogue, but sometimes you just want to make it clear that this character is speaking in a crucial situation or in any spot where someone might get confused as to which character might be talking. So those are your five dialogue formatting rules. I put them all on this slide for quick reference and I'll put a timestamp to this slide, but you should be aware of these five rules whenever you're writing dialogue in a story or at any point in your writing. So before we look at an example, here's an important note on dialogue. Use your stories you've read in the past as a guide for how to write dialogue properly. Almost every story will follow the same dialogue rules, but generally the rules are the same from story to story, or at least close. So if you're ever struggling with dialogue, just open a book, open your textbook, and you should see plenty of examples on how dialogue works, especially with formatting and indenting. So here is a dialogue example from the story Charles by Shirley Jackson. Depending on when you're watching this video, we may or may not have read the story already, but this is from the first page. Notice the indents when a new person speaks. Every time a new character talks, looking at the very top of those three arrows. How was school today? I asked. All right, he said. Did you learn anything? His father asked. Every single time we have an indent. And note that the author makes sure to specify who's speaking. How was school today is said by the narrator. All right is said by the child. Did you learn anything? His father asked. That's important because otherwise we'd assume that the narrator speaking again, being very clear on this part, is useful to your re reader and making sure that everyone is on the same page. Now note that you can also split up dialogue with those phrases like I said, he said, she said. We'll get back to that later. And note at the very bottom of those notes where it says before the quote ends, include correct punctuation. So if you look at every example on this page, at the end of the quotations, you'll see either a comma, a question mark, something to show that the quote is over. And that's important too for dialogue. And like I said, you could look at this screen or any book, any story, and you will see how this format is pretty consistent throughout. So now that you've seen dialogue format, the question is, how do I use commas and other punctuation with direct quotations? So the rest of the slide will be devoted to that to make sure that your grammar is useful and correct when you're talking about your story writing. Here are a few examples of direct quotations and how to use commas and other punctuation in those quotations. I'll leave this slide up for a few seconds, but take a look and see how punctuation can vary based on how you're writing your quotations. So just a reminder before we begin, when we're writing direct quotes, we put quotation marks around any word said by a character or person, and thoughts are usually italicized, but we won't cover that here. 
Second, make sure you end each quote with a punctuation, comma, period, etc., that goes before the last quotation mark. So there are three types of expressions we look for when talking about direct quotes. One of them is introductory expressions, the other is concluding expressions, and the third is interrupting expressions. There are some specialty cases too. Those won't be on any quizzes in this class, but we'll talk about those as well later on. And I also want to note that for introductory expressions, this rule also works for using quotes in formal writing. So if you're told to use a quote for your example in a paper or an essay, then this rule works for you. Now I have both of those first words that come before expressions because you can use them to clearly tell which rule applies. Introductory means to introduce, meaning it's at the start, an intro. Concluding means it concludes, which means it's after the quote. And interrupting is exactly what it sounds like. It interrupts in the middle of a quote. So these three rules, if you have to come back to them, just ask yourself, where is your expression? And by expression, I mean he said, she said, I said, whatever phrase you're using to show that someone's talking and introduces the quote or concludes the quote or interrupts the quote, however it may work. Here's an example of an introductory expression. Barbara said, let's shovel the snow. Barbara said is an expression that gives extra information about the quote. We could just say, let's shovel the snow. Barbara said just gives extra context, but it's not really a complete sentence either. So by comma rules, we need to split this off to show that let's shovel the snow is the main component of the sentence. Barbara said is extra. So since Barbara said is not a complete sentence, as previously said, there needs to be a comma between it and the quote. And this is the general rule. Our expressions need to be split from our quotes so we know which is which and what's the most important. Now this slide has a lot more information on it, but bear with me, because concluding expressions have a second rule that apply to them. So we went to that introductory expression, which I'll go back to for a moment. Barbara said had a comma there to separate it off from let's shovel the snow. And you'll notice with concluding expressions, there's a similar theme here. I am happy said Bill. There's a comma there. It kind of replaces the period that would normally go at the end of the sentence. However, for hurry, everyone yelled, and will you join us tomorrow, we asked. There is no comma. So there's a little rule here I have at the bottom of the slide that exclamation points and question marks replace the comma when being used with the concluding expression. This is simply because those two marks change how we say a sentence. Instead of saying hurry or will you join us tomorrow, I have to say hurry or will you join us tomorrow. My tone has to change, the mood has to change, and so the punctuation mark is replaced. But to go back to the rule we previously established, there needs to be a punctuation between the expression and the actual quote. So whether it's a comma, exclamation point, or question mark, those expressions said Bill, everyone yelled, and we asked, conclude the sentences so there needs to be a punctuation between the quote and the expression. We need to make sure it's clear which one is the quote and which one's the expression. So now we come to our tricky rule, which is the interrupting expression. Your example is this. That, we were informed, is a snow leopard. We were informed interrupts the sentence, that is a snow leopard. Neither that or is a snow leopard act as a complete sentence, so both end in commas. The reason for that is pretty simple. If we were to put a period after we were informed, that would imply that that is a standalone quote. But in real time, that is a snow leopard is being said together. Likewise, a period after the word informed would also make it seem like is a snow leopard's complete sentence, and it's the same problem. So we have to keep in mind the situation here. We were informed it's just being placed in the middle of a quote, and we don't want our reader thinking that these should be separated out in any way. Now I want to note that since this is interrupting, unlike other quotes or expression situations where we would capitalize the word that comes after an introductory expression, for instance, is is not capitalized because we are once again interrupting the sentence and normally is would not be capitalized. And the reason why you have to pay attention to this and ask yourself if you're using an interrupting expression or an expression between what looks like two quotes is that it's different if you have two separate sentences. So if we have two sentences, like this example, this is not the right way, George said, let's turn back. In this case, this is not the right way is a complete sentence. Let's turn back is also a complete sentence. Now because of that, we're not looking at an interrupter here. We're basically looking at two separate portions of a quote, and there just happens to be an expression between them. So since both portions here are complete sentences, we're going to end each one in periods because they are complete thoughts. This is not the right way George said. It should be thought of more like a concluding expression, and then let's turn back just doesn't have an expression with it. So you just learned the basics on how to use expressions with quotes, but you should also be aware there are some special cases to consider. 
For instance, with question marks and exclamation points, you have to figure out if the mark is part of the quote or part of the sentence or both. Look at some of these examples below. Joe said, what is the homework tonight? Normally a Joe said sentence would just end with a period, but because what is the homework tonight is a question, we put a question mark inside the quotations, so our reader knows that question mark only applies to the quote, it does not apply to the whole sentence. Now in the next example, did Joe say, I'll do my homework? I'll do my homework isn't a question. I mean, it could be, but not in this case. So I put the question mark on the outside because did Joe say is a question. And so I want to make sure it's clear that question mark goes with the whole sentence and not just the quote. Now the same rule applies with exclamation points. He just screamed snow day. Snow day is meant to be screamed, but not the whole sentence. So the exclamation point goes within the quote. And if you want to get really confusing, did Mr. Williams shout snow day? Snow day is still meant to be exclaimed, so we put an exclamation point in there. However, the whole sentence would be a question mark, so a question mark goes outside the quotes. Now these are clearly special cases, you won't see them that often, but you should be aware that the question marks and exclamation points have a task. Their job is to tell us how to say the sentence. So we need to know whether it goes within the quote or outside of the quote to make sure the grammar is proper. So to summarize the rules you just learned, first, Quotation marks are placed around words said by characters or people. So when you're writing, whether it's something you've taken from another source and put in an essay, or writing dialogue, quotation marks go around those phrases or those sentences that are meant to be said by somebody else. Second, a punctuation mark needs to separate the expression from the actual quote. So if you're going to use a he said or according to the author or anything like that, you need to make sure there's a punctuation in between the actual quoted part and that expression. Next two rules go with question marks and exclamation points. The third rule, when there is a question mark or exclamation point where you normally separate a quote or expression, you don't need to add an additional comma. The question mark and exclamation point replace that comma. And also with these two marks, don't forget that you have to be careful with sentences that might end in a question mark or exclamation point, since sometimes the grammar can have some special cases. Now the rest of the slideshow is just example problems. If you feel confident with your comma usage and your knowledge of dialogue format and punctuation, then you don't need to go any further. However, if you'd like to keep going, there are four example problems along with an explanation for the answers in the next portion. Your job here is to figure out where any punctuation goes. Commas, periods, exclamation points, question marks. I've included a few punctuations for rules that aren't covered in this slide, but otherwise it's up to you. Now the rest of the slide, I'm not going to speak. I'll leave each slide up for five to 10 seconds, and then you can pause accordingly to make sure that you are following along the way that you would like to, the way that your pace will allow. The first slide will have the problems. The second slide will give all the answers, and then each slide after that will tell you how or why the commas, the periods, the punctuations are placed the way they are. I hope you found this slideshow useful and feel free to ask me any questions.